Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's Gary and today we're on this beautiful Grand Banks 36 in order to do a review on two well-known marine binoculars. Both of these binoculars have got built-in compasses and this is the Bushnell and we'll also be looking at the Steiner Navigator. We've moved over into the dinette area so we can have a closer look at these binoculars. Um, we'll start off with the Bushnell. It uh, comes in this um, soft case with a pretty nasty um, sort of solar strap. Not that we need that. Um, it's not an unboxing. Uh, these are products that I have um, purchased for my own use and I wanted a rugged pair of binoculars um, that I can use at sea uh, with a built-in compass. Both of the binoculars have similar specifications in terms of the coatings of, on the uh, lenses. Um, both of them provide excellent um, low light vision and both of them are the standard uh, 7x50 uh, which is a standard uh, marine um, specification for binoculars. Uh, both of them are rugged and uh, have gas filled uh, units um, to prevent moisture penetration. The Bushnell, the compass is in this part of the uh, binoculars. Um, there is a light, so the battery, little penny batteries go into here um, to light up the compass um, at night and the operation, the button for the operation for the light is is just here. Um, you get a strap. I'd say probably the strap on the Bushnell is probably better than the Steiner. Uh, this is the Steiner. It's a slightly um, shorter pair of binoculars, um, which I quite like actually because um, what it means is, is that I've got a habit of placing the binoculars um, down onto work surfaces and uh, onto surfaces and um, as the vessel is rolling it means that the slightly shorter pair of binoculars um, don't tend to um, fall over so easily. Uh, but we'll come over to, we'll talk about falling over things in a minute. Again the Steiner rugged pair of binoculars standard 7 by uh, 50 in this instance the compass is in this part uh, this little window here provides uh, natural light to light up the um, compass and on the um, Bushnell uh, the natural light is uh, in this one here just comes through that panel there and then night time the Steiner, the button to switch on the illumination for, 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 for the compass is just on the side here and the battery just goes in this little panel here. Again, very, very good binoculars for um, particularly at low light levels. Um, you can really see a significant difference um, the sort of level of binoculars um, as opposed to um, cheaper um, binoculars that you can get hold of. Certainly usage wise or handling wise the Bushnell in my view is much more comfortable. It looks like a far better um, product that's nice and sleek and slimline uh, where on the Steiner you've got this sort of big sort of bulge at the top here um, it's it's fairly comfortable to use 
um, but it doesn't look as good as the uh, as the Bushnell. However, having said that, um, the original pair that I bought was the Bushnell, and basically I had dropped the uh, Bushnell from the navigation table and it bounced on the floor and then when I came to use it I found that the optics had fallen out of alignment and basically I was getting a, um, a ghosting. Um, so I sent them back to Bushnell uh, with a description that I'd that have had a fall and that I had the ghosting and uh, it cost me a little bit of money but uh, that they got it fixed and sent it back to me and within a few weeks uh, the ghosting had reappeared again um, so basically the optics had gone out of alignment and this time it was not my fault I did not um, drop them um, so pretty disappointing for a rugged um, pair of binoculars. Um, these I've seen online for around about £200, um, so they're not cheap. Um, the other thing that I find is, is that the, the Bushnell, the compass, is supposed to be dampened. Now what I find is that on a smaller vessel, uh, the movement of the water, the compass will move um, anything from 10 to 15 degrees either side um, of what you're um, looking at. So if you're trying to get a bearing on um, a, a marker buoy, um, or if you're trying to um, track a vessel to see if there's an opening or closing, um, compass to see if there's a risk of collision, you've got to guess as to what the bearing is. Um, the, foot, the, the compass is just not dampened enough. Um, so I would say it's very good for um, a large ship, um, but where the rolling isn't going to be um, as much. Um, but I'd say that uh, for, for, for a small vessel, it's very disappointing. The Steiner, again, there is um, a little bit of swaying in the uh, in, in the compass. It's just it's just not dampened enough, and I'll find that um, that it can you, you can get a range of um, I'd say it's better. Um, you get a range of about five degrees. Um, e either side of the actual bearing and um, again I'd say very good for a large ship um, for a small vessel um, unless you're in calm water um, I just don't find that the dampening is um, good enough. Out of the two uh, marks out of ten I would say the Bushnell I would give no more than four. I'd say it's a very expensive piece of kit um, for a compass that just isn't dampened enough and just isn't rugged enough. Uh, for the Steiner, again, these are more expensive. These are around about um, £270. Um, so it's not cheap. And uh, out of ten, I'd probably give them eight. Um, if I were using them on a large ship, um, I would say that they're, um, they're probably superior to anything else that I've seen. Um, very, very good. Um, but on a smaller vessel, um, I would say it's an awful lot of money to spend um, when I would say a hand, com a hand compass would probably do a better job and a pair of um, good quality 7x50s um, without a compass. So in all, I'd say that these products are fairly disappointing for the small uh, vessel user. Um, 
and I hope this has been of help to you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you again. Thank you for watching.